We have arrived in Kyoto. We just took the Shinkansen. Located west of central Kyoto, Arashiyama is about 45 minutes outside the city center by bus or JR train. Popular among tourists for its bamboo grove, this area is home to soaring bamboo stalks, peaceful ambiences, koi ponds, shrines, and gardens. I definitely recommend arriving well before 9am if you hope to avoid the rush of tourists. And if you're coming in the summer months, mosquito repellent is a must. Today is our first full day in Kyoto. We arrived yesterday and we took a rapid train this morning to Arashiyama. So we just are leaving the bamboo forest right now. It was really pretty, a lot of mosquitoes. It's really hot. Um, we didn't really make it as early as we wanted, so it was pretty busy, but if you wait a bit, still a chance to get some photos with nobody else in them. And there's some gardens here, and I think if I'm brave enough, we're gonna go to a monkey park. Ramen wants to go to the monkey park. I'm scared of the monkey park. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So how's the monkey park, Robin? I couldn't do it. I saw a monkey and I turned around and I just walked away. But I got ice cream. After riding back on a rapid train, we took a quick shower because it was just crazy hot today. And now for dinner, we're going to Nishiki Market in Kyoto, which is just like an indoor market street with tons of different vendors. There's lots of food to try. So we're pretty much just gonna fill up on whatever we find interesting. <laughs> Nishiki Market consists of a single street that spans five blocks and is an amazing place to spend an afternoon. With vendors selling everything from fresh seafood to matcha parfaits, you won't go hungry here. Remember to stand still while trying the various foods because in Japan it's considered bad manners to walk while eating. I guess we got here a little later than we should have. Pretty much everything is closed. The only thing we could really find is fresh crab, which seems really good, so we're gonna have that. Oh my god. That's so good. Super fresh. Got some shrimp skewers. How is it? outside, south, inside. And the cream is like ice cream. It's vanilla ice cream. Mm. I guess it closes at six, so we had two things, but it's not really dinner. So now we're just trying to figure out what to do next. Ichiran Ramen is a famous Japanese ramen noodle chain specializing in tonkatsu ramen. 
With several locations across the country, it's taken off even outside of Tokyo, and I can pretty much guarantee once you've tried Ichiran, little else can compare. You place your order while waiting to be seated, choosing your noodle density, the amount of meat, and your spice level. You're then taken to an individual booth for an authentic Japanese dining experience. This morning we are going to do the only thing that is located close to our hotel, which is to visit the Fushimi Inari Shrine. So we're on our way there now, and from my understanding there's going to be a bit of a hike that we can go on through the Tori Gates. So we'll see how busy it is. We tried to get up really early so that we would be some of the only people there. Fushimi Inari Shrine is an important Shinto shrine dedicated to Inari, the Shinto god of rice. The 32,000 gates weave their way up Mount Inari, creating a passage for visitors who can hike to the top over the course of two to three hours. Because it is believed that Inari used foxes as his messengers, many statues of these curious creatures can be found throughout the trails here. We came back from Fushimi and Ari. We both took a shower, cleaned up a bit because it's just the humidity is kind of insane. Like you just go outside and you're just damp. So now we're gonna go into Kyoto and we have a tea ceremony booked this afternoon. So we're just gonna wander around a bit before that, maybe have lunch. And ramen is all ready to go. He has his little fanny pack that he bought. It's not a fanny pack, it's a man purse. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Maybe saying this wrong, but we've made it to Gion Historic District. Unfortunately, we were unable to film the tea ceremony, but if you travel to Kyoto, this is an experience I cannot recommend highly enough. The making of the tea is almost like a meditation, and it set the tone for the rest of our day exploring Gion, Kyoto's beautiful historic district where many hope to glimpse a geisha. Kichi Kichi is a famous restaurant located in Pontocho Alley and the specialty dish is called Kichi Kichi Oma Rice. This is fried rice topped off with the most amazing omelette I've ever had. Every meal is cooked by famous chef Mocho Kichi Yakamura himself and served to you directly at your table. Seating is extremely limited so it's usually necessary to book well in advance. Trust me when I say it's a meal you do not want to miss. I'm 
We had the most amazing dinner at Kichi Kichi Omarais. It was honestly everything we were hoping it would be. The energy there was so good. The food was amazing. And the guy was super nice and he had recently visited Canada. Today is our last full day in Kyoto. So this morning we kind of slept in a little bit, not by much, 6.30 a.m. <laughs> and we've just been kind of waking up really early, just from jet lag, I guess, I don't know. We're gonna try souffle pancakes this morning at this restaurant called Elk. Ramen is very excited. He's been talking about souffle pancakes all week. We took a bus from Kyoto out to the Fukushima Temple, which is behind me. Kinkakuji Temple is a Zen temple in the north of Kyoto and is also referred to as the Golden Pavilion because the top two floors are actually real gold. It has burned down on more than a few occasions throughout history, and today's structure was rebuilt in 1955. On site, you can also visit the Sekitaya Tea House and former priest's living quarters. We found the easiest and most affordable way to get here from Kyoto Station was by direct bus, but you can also take the subway to Kataoji Station and then take a bus or taxi from there. This unique location is as serene as it appears, despite the many visitors. We are finishing up at the Golden Pavilion or King Kakuji Temple. It was really beautiful, really peaceful. It's like a different kind of vanilla taste. I don't know how to explain it. Ninenzaka and Saninzaka, formerly called slopes, are historic stone streets that hail to Japan's ancient beauty. Lined with quaint shops, cafes, and endless opportunities for a sample, you can easily spend a full afternoon exploring and shopping. Eventually, you'll make your way up to Kiyomizadera Temple, which literally translated means pure waterfall. It is one of Japan's oldest and most well-known temples, dating back to 780. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994. It's a little slice of nature surrounded by dense forests, just steps out of Kyoto city center, and at sunset it is truly a sight to behold.
Kyoto was everything that comes to mind when I think of Japan. Its serene vibrations will take you back in time and make you want to return over and over again. Three dollars won't get back. <laughs> Try again tomorrow. <laughs> Six more to go.